look over there! She's all by herself, right? Because she's acting as if she's talking and laughing with somebody else. Uh, Paimon's creeped out. What? You mean, you used to act like that too? Uh, so is this an invisible friend who hangs out with you sometimes? Or do they just exist in your imagination? Imaginary... Imagination... Oh, you must mean imagined friend, right? Why didn't you just say so? So, this imaginary friend of yours, when does Paimon get to meet them? Seriously? So, imaginary friends just disappear when you grow up? Oh... Paimon was looking forward to meeting yours. Hey, don't suppose your sister has an imaginary friend, too? No way! You guys are so lucky! Because they have this game in Liyue. Have you heard of it? It's a four-player game, but it seems you guys could play it with just the two of you. Oh, Traveler. Fancy meeting you here. Ah, oh, Tone Deaf Bard. What are you doing here? <laughs> I'm here because Lisa has been making some exciting new contraptions. <laughs> Why does the thought of Lisa's contraptions make Paimon so nervous? Come now, that's no way to speak about the elegant Miss Lisa. For this particular contraption, Lisa had to import some dangerous materials from Sumeru. D dangerous That's right. Looks like a monocle, but actually it's called a Nernama detector. Sadly, Lisa isn't able to use it herself, so I'm borrowing it for a while. And also, I'm testing it out for her, to see if it actually works. Huh? Why can't Lisa use it? Hmm... Perhaps it's because she lacks a certain childlike sense of wonder. Or maybe there's some other reason for it. If you want to know for sure, just ask her yourself sometime. So, you can see them? Go on! What does his imaginary friend look like? <laughs> that would be telling. Anyway, it's all yours now, Traveler. Take a look. See if you can see Nora's imaginary friend. Do you see him? Do you see him? Ah, huh, so it does work for you two. Paimon wants to see? Wait, but this gizmo isn't in Paimon's size. All right, then. You'll just have to be Paimon's eyes on the ground. Let's go see what everyone's imaginary friends look like. Flora from the flower shop always seems kind of floaty-headed, you know? Paimon bets she has an imaginary friend. <laughs> there it is! Behold, a floaty imaginary friend for floaty-headed Flora! A bloaty floaty! Wait, imaginary friends can be plants now? <laughs> Hi, Traveler. Hi, Bard. Sure, how can I help? Hmm, oh, you mean Mr. Floaty? Most people can't see him. Mr. Floaty is my bestest friend. We grew up together. Say hello, Mr. Floaty. They can see you. <sighs> no fair. Paimon hates feeling left out. Flora, why exactly are you friends with a bloaty floaty? What's wrong with it? I always wanted to be friends with a plant who could fly. Friends with a flying plant? Why? <laughs> because then when it's windy, you and your friend can fly off into the sky together. You gotta admit that's pretty cool. Isn't that called being blown away? <laughs> That's what some people like to call it. I only found out this plant existed from an explorer who told me stories of his adventures. I think his name was... Stanley. Stanley's an adventurer. And you can tell he's an expert at it from the stories he tells. <laughs> the amazing adventures of Stanley are super famous in Mondstadt. He's in the city at the moment. You should go ask him to tell you some of his stories. That sounds like a fun idea for next time. But, uh, right now we have other things to attend to. Flora is 
a pretty mysterious kid. Hmm, which child shall we interrogate next? Paimon's thinking. Oh, how about that little guy on the bridge? N no way! Well, uh, that is unexpected. Timmy's imaginary friend is a ruin guard? Paimon's freaking out right now. That thing is sure to attack us. Uh, <laughs> uh, what say you we postpone our conversation with Timmy for the time being? Huh? Paimon has a favorite line? Uh, seriously? Oh, all right then. How about we explore the area ahead of us later? Children are more open-minded. Is that why they can think up all kinds of imaginary friends? Ah, <sighs> fitting, isn't it? That the City of Freedom should be home to children with such boundless powers of imagination. What about adults' imaginations? Let's ask some adults at the tavern! The thing about wine is, you have to drink it at the tavern, or you miss out on half the fun. Seems to me you'd find some way of keeping yourself amused, even if you drank alone. <laughs> if I didn't know any better, I would say you're being deliberately uncivil. Just drink responsibly on my premises, okay? Oh, and if I did have one too many, what then? You'd throw me out along with the trash, is that it? Throw you out? You know, the same way you threw out Father's legacy. You sold off his mansion, or maybe you've forgotten. I see no reason to cling to things that have outlived their purpose. Is that so? Then I trust you were most swift indeed to part with a certain vase? Sorry. I have no recollection. That's odd. Master Diluc, I'm sure I saw such a vase in your home. A beautiful one. Unmistakable, in fact. Seems our suspicions were right. Grown-ups don't appear to have imaginary friends. Like I said, a lack of childlike wonder. So people just stop dreaming when they grow up? Okay, well, Paimon for one never wants to grow up. Hmm, this raises an interesting question. At what age exactly do people's imaginary friends disappear? Let's go and check. Hmm, how about Ellen? Someone of her age surely must have some imagination left, don't you think? Uh-oh. Somehow Paimon finds the idea of not being able to see Ellen's imaginary friend kind of scary. Jean? What is Jean doing here? Is Master Jean Ellen's imaginary friend? So she's so determined to become a knight that she... Okay, that's kind of weird. Huh? Oh, hello. What are you guys doing? Are you always training here? You bet. Today, I heard Stanley talking about his adventures. It was incredible. It got me really pumped up. Oh, I hope I can be as outstanding as him one day. So that you can fight shoulder to shoulder with Master Jean? <laughs> I, I mean, obviously I want to become a knight. And if I got to go on an adventure with Jean herself, well, even better. Seems Ellen really looks up to Jean. Oh, thanks. I was thinking, it's not every day I get to hang out with the honorary knight. Would you join me for some sword training? Oh, thank you. It's clear I still have a long way to go in my training. <laughs> so modest. I, for one, think you're quite the pro at this already. Oh, well, I'm exhausted from training, so clearly my fitness needs some work. One day, though, I'll smash all the training dummies in Mondstadt. Ellen, Ellen, she's our girl. If she can't do it, um, Hilly Churl. Ugh, thanks.
Thanks. Shoot, I got so caught up here I forgot there's something I was supposed to do today. Ugh, but I'm so sore from training. I can hardly move. Honorary Knight, could you deliver a message to Jack for me? He's a friend of mine, recently started as an adventurer. We were gonna meet up tonight and discuss adventure plans. <sighs> could you let him know it'll have to be another day? If I'm not mistaken, you should find him at the Temple of the Lion. He's adventuring with Stanley today. Stanley's a truly legendary adventurer, renowned in all of Mondstadt. He once set foot in the Mare Javari. Great. Thank you so much. The Temple of the Lion? We explored this place once before, didn't we? During the Storm Terror incident. Seems like it's now a hot spot for adventurers. That can only mean one thing. We didn't bag all the loot last time! Hey, are those guys... <sighs> 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 I was so sure I was about to die. To be fair, that could have gone either way. So, you must be Jack the Adventurer, I assume? Yes. Who are you? Actually, we came looking for you. Ellen has a message for you. She said she won't be able to join you today to plan out your next adventure together. She'll join you some other time. Oh, I see. I feel bad you had to come all this way to find me, and then had to rescue me. Huh? I don't see what all the fuss is about. It was nothing that I, Stanley, couldn't have dealt with by myself. Whoa! You are Stanley? You were that legendary adventurer? Renowned in all of Mondstadt? Who once set foot in the Mare Javari? <laughs> the very same. <laughs> I must say, it's an honor to meet one as legendary as yourself. Well then, how would everyone like to proceed? Head back or head further inside? <laughs> well, I think you're now in the safe hands of Stanley, the great explorer and legend of Mondstadt. In which case, why head back now? Okay, motion passed by unanimous consent. Let's head further in. <laughs> so, I'm guessing you mostly came here because you wanted to hear my adventure stories. Am I right? No, we really were just looking for Jack. What? Do you know who I am? I am Stanley, renowned adventurer of Mondstadt. Yeah, I think we got that. Well, your attitude says maybe you don't got that. I am Stanley, the living legend. Stanley who braved the Mare Javari. Enough already! Ugh, stop name-dropping yourself every time you open your mouth! It's true, though. Stanley is the most amazing guy. <laughs> well, Jack will listen, won't you? Now, where was I? You and your partner reached the Mare Javari, a famously terrifying place with not a wisp of wind. Precisely. There was a deathly silence in the air. A sea of ashes stretched out before us, as far as the eye could see. The Mare Javari. Suddenly, my partner was caught in a whirlpool whipped up by an evil beast. Luckily, I managed to grab hold of him just in time. Wow! So, did he make it? <sighs> Sadly, in the end, I alone was able to set foot on home ground once more, where the gentle breeze carried away the tears welling up in my eyes. <laughs> that poor guy. How could that happen? Jack, you can't cry so easily if you want to be a great adventurer. <laughs> I... I know. Because an adventurer's proudest achievement is to die in the course of their final adventure. 
But whatever happens, no adventurer should ever die in a place where the wind doesn't blow. The wind has to bring your spirit back to Mondstadt. That's right. To die in a place where the wind blows, and to have your spirit carried back to Mondstadt on the wind, that's... that's the dream. Yeah. Although, the most I can aspire to right now is beginner's commissions, like clearing out the slimes clogging up the sewers. You shouldn't die in a place with no wind. Why do they keep going on about that? Hmm, is that why Stanley thinks the Mare Javari is the most terrifying place in the world? Because there's no wind there? Traveler, I believe I've made a small discovery. Could I ask you to use the Nurnama detector once more? What? Stanley has an imaginary friend? It seems his imaginary friend is a seasoned warrior, covered in scars from head to foot, and a look of staunch determination on his face. You're saying his imaginary friend is an idealized version of his own self? Interesting idea, but is it true? Please excuse me, uh... I'll be leaving now. Bye, Stanley. Do you two still have time to spare? What is it? A few days ago, Stanley got drunk and told me a secret. Something he's never told anyone before. The weapons he took on his adventure all those years ago. They were none other than those once wielded by Mondstadt's greatest hero, Vanessa herself. The Sword of Brilliant Valor and the Shield of Magnificent Honor. I don't know whether you believe me, but apparently, both the sword and shield are still right here in Mondstadt, over in Dadaupa Gorge. Since you guys are the experts at this, can you come with me to try and retrieve these two legendary weapons? You bet! This is Stanley we're talking about. If I can just get a hold of something impressive enough to show my family what I'm capable of, Maybe they'll finally come around to the idea of me being an adventurer. Right now, I'm just a rookie. My abilities are limited. And my parents don't support my goals one bit. So, what do you say? Help a guy out? I can't bring myself to tell Stanley about it, because my reasons are so... Uh, selfish. But, I swear I'll give the weapons back to him as soon as I'm done. Aw, poor Jack. Let's help him out! Venti, you coming too? Hmm, I don't know... Oh, one other thing. I have a bottle of rare vintage wine that I had someone fetch for me a couple years ago. Help me find these weapons, and it's all yours. Uh, Dada Gorge, was it? <laughs> Let's hurry, there's no time to lose. That bunch of hilly churls! Are they holding some kind of ceremony? And what's with that pile of knickknacks? Are they worshipping them? Seems so. That must be the Sword of Brilliant Valor, surely! <laughs> Lo and behold, the Sword of Brilliant Valor! Are you sure? Looks kinda basic to Paimon, and a little worse for wear, too. Why would Hilly Trolls be bowing down before a piece of junk like this? Uh, uh, seems somebody tossed an old sword into a pile of spoils these Hilly Trolls were already celebrating. This is in terrible shape, and it's so basic, I... <sighs> I'm at a loss for words. Hmm. Say, Jack, have you ever seen an Animo crystal fly? They're found in the open country around Mondstadt City. If you saw one in broad daylight, you wouldn't bat an eyelid. But in the pitch blackness of night, its brilliant glow is mesmerizing. It truly resembles an exquisite crystal dancing in the night air. Is Valor not the same? When everything is going your way, it seems meaningless. Fades into the background. But when you're in dire straits, Valor is the thing that gets you fired up and fighting back. It's the brilliant ray of light that guides you out from the darkness. You're right. You're right. Then this has to be it. This is the Sword of Brilliant Valor. 
<laughs> mm -hmm. So, we got our sword. Now we just need that shield. Let's scout around. It's definitely in Dadaupa Gorge, so... Uh huh? There's somebody there. Stanley? What's he doing here? He's acting so weird. What happened? Why did you stop all of a sudden? Uh huh? Oh, uh, it's nothing. Just one of those Mora spouting weasel thieves passed by is all. What? Where? I, I want to see. <laughs> Maybe another time. <laughs> we have a shield to find, remember? Lo and behold, the shield of magnificent honor. Liar, liar, pants on fire. It's a chunk of wood. A chunk of scrap wood with the handle attached. Who in their right mind would use this as a shield? There's also wine stains on it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was just taken from a wine barrel. And yet, my bard's intuition tells me that this is none other than the Shield of Magnificent Honor. Warriors wear their battle scars with pride, and shields are no different. Surely an intact shield is one that has shied away from the battlefield. Is not the broken and splintered shield the one that has fought in countless wars and lived to tell the tale? Though the soldier's body be tired and torn, still they fight till the very end, till they have no blood left to bleed. Such magnificent strength of will. Is that not the true meaning of honor? You do have a point. Shiny new shields don't stay new and shiny for long. Okay, then. Well, maybe if we ask nicely, he'll just let us take the shield of magnificent honor for free. Ahem. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Hilly Churro? Lala. Well, okay. You take it from here. Hope you've picked up some Hilly Churrillion by now. If not, there's always body language. Mosimita. Seems cheerful enough. Maybe negotiating will work after all. Mosimita. Seems cheerful enough. Maybe negotiating will work after all. Mm hmm? Uh, well, if you insist, a tune I shall strum. Masimita. Seems cheerful enough. Maybe negotiating will work after all. Mejigen plata? Mania! Manitata! Oh, yeah! He actually gave us the shield! Guys, thank you so much! I can't believe I actually found them. Mom, Dad, check out the legendary weapons I found. Hey, wait! The wine, you promised! Oh, and I actually helped a lot this time. Hmm? What are you doing here, Stanley? Out for a stroll? Uh, <laughs> uh hey, hey, <laughs> what are you doing here, Bard? Fancy that, huh? You, um, uh, out for a stroll, too? Oh, well, that's right. An after-dinner stroll, to be precise. We were also helping a friend look for something. Paimon's starting to think Stanley might be a fraud. Did Stanley plant the sword and shield here in advance so as to not hurt Jack's feelings? Adventurers must be pretty familiar with Dada Upa Gorge. You fought battles here before, after all. <laughs> you better believe it. I can navigate this whole area with my eyes closed. Wow. And I admire your perseverance. And your memory, too. It's only to be expected of a great adventurer like me. You guys had better watch out, though. This place is crawling with hillichurros. I, uh... I'll get back to my, um... Uh, stroll now. Goodbye. Guilty conscience, much? Well, he shouldn't have gotten so carried away bragging to Jack, should he? Although, on further reflection, I must say I'm intrigued. Someone who can't let go of the past and gives up on the present instead. I wonder if such a person was forced to take their first step towards the future. Which way would they go? 
What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just musing to myself. Anyway, I propose we take a trip to Angel's Share tonight. Tell me, Stan. Tell me what should I do? Huh? Why does he keep repeating his own name? Could there be another called Stanley? Oh, Stanley. It should have been me. I should have been the one to die in the Meljavari that day. Why won't your spirit come and stop me from using your name? Why, Stanley? Why? If only you hadn't had to save a rookie like me, you would have never died in that windless corner of the world. You were a renowned adventurer, destined to become a legend one day. But now, that'll never happen because your life was cut short and all because of a worthless tag alone. Uh, does anyone get what's going on here? I think our friend really did make it to the Mare Javari. And I think the tragedy he encountered there was real, too. But the real adventurer, the real Stanley, that was his partner, not him. The real Stanley is the one who died to save our Stanley. Wait, so the only reason our Stanley is called Stanley in the first place is because he stole the other Stanley's name? I fear that may be the case. Stanley, for so many years I've lived in fear. Fear that Mondstadt will forget all about you. So I tell you adventure stories at every opportunity. Mondstadt must remember. Stanley reached the center of the Madjabari. He's the greatest adventurer there ever was, and he lives on. Stanley will never die, because I am Stanley. I am Stanley. I'm sorry, Stanley. I'm getting too old. Now. <sighs> Are you guys planning on eavesdropping much longer? Yikes! We're busted! <sighs> Go away. Save your questions. And just leave me in peace. But... Leave now. Don't make me tell you again. Honorary Knight, Venti, and Paimon. I'm so glad you guys are here. I've been looking for you everywhere. I wanted to thank you again for helping me find the sword and shield. My parents are finally supporting me. Oh, really? Yeah, really. They even said they're going to pay for someone to fix up the sword of brilliant valor and shield of magnificent honor for me so I can take them out on the road. That's wonderful! So, Jack, is this the part where you bid farewell to Mondstadt and set off on your intrepid trip traversing to Vat? No, not yet. I still don't have what it takes to go too far from home just yet. Besides, I'm sure Stanley still has a few stories left to tell. <laughs> They're what inspired me to become an adventurer in the first place. Stanley, I... Oh, you're drunk again. We'll see you tomorrow, then. After your hangover wears off, maybe you can tell me some more of your stories? Stanley's really fond of that kid, don't you think? Uh, Jack. Jack. Jack left. Oh, I see. Well, thank you for not telling him about my secret. Huh? All of a sudden you're facing the facts? That isn't like you. Just now, I couldn't bear to look at him. His adventurous spirit is so pure, unblemished. I'm just a weary old feckless fraud. But that kid is a brand new shining star, full of potential. I cannot allow his dreams to be crushed. Mm, you're not a total fraud. Stanley's adventure stories and experiences, they're all true, aren't they? Stories? Experiences? What's the point of them anymore? 
to be honest, my memories of adventuring and of Stanley, they're hazy these days. That's my biggest secret of all, and my biggest fear. All these years, I've been living to tell his story, but his personality and the details of his life, I don't remember them clearly anymore. <laughs> but the one thing I can never forget is that he died in a windless land where his spirit can never be recovered. Exactly. Even in his memory, the real Stanley isn't the living, breathing friend he knew at all. Instead, he's become fixed on the image of him as that battle-scarred warrior, and that image has held him captive his entire life. I'm too old. I never let go. But still, so much has slipped away. I'm completely and utterly worthless. No adventurer should have to go that way. No adventurer ever. I, I, I can't believe it. Thank you all. And thank you, Lord Barbados. I'm sorry. It's gonna take me some time to calm back down. But I think that I'm gonna be okay. Ah, wonderful! Stanley reconnected with his true self and Jack can finally go his own way! This calls for a celebration! And by celebration, I do, of course, mean libation. And by libation, you mean you're not leaving this tavern till you're too drunk to walk, right? <laughs> no, the wine here's too expensive. Jack still owes me some wine, though. He promised me a rare vintage in exchange for helping him out, remember? I'll head off to fetch the wine. See you shortly. Let's meet at the usual place. Huh? Where's that supposed to be? Why has Paima never heard of it? Hey, Tone Death Bard! You made it. Finally. Just tell us where you meet next time, okay? We looked everywhere. Huh. <sighs> so... Did you at least manage to find your wine? Yep. Well, sort of. Jack made it out to be a rare collector's edition vintage. When actually it's just a half bottle of regular cider. Ah, <sighs> this takes me back. The first time I saw this view, I hadn't even taken on this form yet. It was about 2600 years ago, before the world had come under the rule of the Seven. At that time, old Mondstadt was ruled by a tyrant, who sealed off the city's perimeter with a ferocious hurricane. Even the birds couldn't get in or out. Old Mondstadt? Oh, Pyma remembers! Nowadays it's known as Storm Terror's Lair, right? You mentioned it before! That's right. The tyrant of the winds who once ruled from that tower was Decarabian, god of storms. Back then, I was but a wisp among the thousand winds. I wasn't a god of anything. I didn't even have a human form. I was just a tiny elemental being who lived in the wind, a gentle breeze bringing subtle changes for the better, or tiny seeds of hope. A tiny elemental being? Without a human form? Venti, do you mean you used to look different than you do now? Yep. My current form is not so different from the situation with fake Stanley. <laughs> I took the form of a friend. So then what? What happened to your friend? Say, Paimon, do you wish to hear the next part of the story? Yes, of course! The suspense is killing, Paimon! Now's the time you suddenly get a craving for apples? Really? <laughs> Getting a little peckish or something. Huh. Paimon's had it up to here with you. <sighs> you know, you're so smart it almost makes me uncomfortable sometimes. But then, maybe it's right that true friends can tell what the other is thinking. A refreshing drink, a gentle breeze. <sighs> Moments like this always take me back. Back to a song that I first heard from him. <laughs> 